Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to create VLANs on a Cisco 3550 Catalyst switch. What we're going to have is we're going to have two VLANs. VLAN 2, or the user VLAN, will contain computer A. And VLAN 3, the server VLAN, will contain two computers, B and C. Computer A is connected to the switch via port 3. And computer B is connected to the switch via port 4 on the switch and computer C is connected to the switch via port 5. The current IP address settings for all these computers is as follows. So as it is right now these two VLANs have not been created and all these computers have been connected to the switch on these ports but these ports, these computers are all on the same default VLAN or VLAN number one that exists on the switch already. So if I were to ping the other computers I would be able to get replies from all machines. So I'm able to get replies for for all machines. This is because they're all part of the same VLAN. However, we're going to change that. We're going to move certain computers into certain VLANs. So computer A will be moved into VLAN number 2 and computers B and C will be moved into VLAN 3. So let's jump into the VLAN creation process. I've connected to my switch via hyperterminal and then I'm going to enter the config mode. First I'm going to create the user VLAN or VLAN 2. So I type the command VLAN 2. Then I'm going to give it a name to describe that VLAN. So for description I'm going to call it the user VLAN. Exit out of the VLAN mode and then I'm going to create VLAN number 3. And this is the server VLAN. So I'm going to describe it as the server name. Exit out of VLAN mode. Now what I need to do is associate the ports to VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. To do that, first I need to log in to the port that I would like to associate. So let's begin with port number 3. Now remember, port number 3 is to be connected to the user VLAN which is VLAN number 2. So I'm going to type switch port mode access and then switch port access VLAN 2. What this command does, it makes port number 3 a member of VLAN 2. Finally, I'm going to exit out of this interface mode and do the same for the other two ports. And run the very same commands. But this time I will be associating port 4 to VLAN 3. So then I do the same for the fifth port. And that's it. We finished associated our ports with our VLANs. If I exit out of config mode and I do a show VLAN brief. I'm going to see the two VLANs that I've created, the user VLAN and the server VLAN. Port 3 being associated with the user VLAN and ports 4 and 5 associated with the server VLAN, just as we have in the document here. Now, remember previously we were, we were able to ping all computers. Each computer was able to ping 
each other computer on a network because they were all part of the VLAN 1, the default VLAN that exists on the Cisco switch. However, we've moved them, we've moved the computers now into different VLANs. So what will happen now when we try to do pings from each computer to each other computer? So to demonstrate, the computer with the IP address 10.0.2 is computer A. And on computer A, computer A was added to the user VLAN. So if I try to ping these two IP addresses for computer B and C, let's see what happens. we get no response. Let's try computer C. We also get no response. Now, what will happen if computer C tries to ping computer B? I get replies. But will computer C No, it's not possible. This is because we've created VLANs which basically segments the network into logical networks. Similarly, on computer B, if computer B tries to ping computer C, I get a response. However, it will not be able to ping computer E because computer E is in a different VLAN. So let's see how we can get these computers to communicate with each other. Although they have been seg segmented by VLANs, on a Cisco Catalyst switch which, us which uses multi-layer routing, we can configure what is called inter-VLAN routing to allow VLANs to communicate with each other.